For today's video, I want to talk about how long it really takes to cycle an aquarium, which is a topic that's often misunderstood in the hobby. Getting this wrong when setting up a new tank can cause serious problems with your fish, shrimp, some snails and even some plants. So my goal for this video is not only to set out realistic expectations for how long the cycling process usually takes, but go into the various factors to explain what can affect it so you can better understand what's happening in your tank. Now this video isn't about how to cycle a tank, so I link to one of my articles in the description going over the dark start cycling method, which is probably my favourite method. But to briefly summarise it, the cycling process is all about building up beneficial microorganism colonies or using live plants to keep the toxic ammonia and toxic nitrite levels in our aquariums undetectable to make sure our fish, shrimp, snails and plants are all safe. So getting into the video and cycling, a brand new tank from scratch can take anywhere from as little as a week under perfect conditions to as long as two months in less than ideal situations. In my experience, most of my tanks usually take around a month to fully cycle and I think that's a realistic expectation for anyone new to the hobby. Now you might be thinking about using a bacteria in a bottle product or seed in your new tank by squeezing out established filter media in it, but this doesn't always guarantee success. That's because there's several different factors all at play at the same time that can affect how quickly our tanks take to cycle fully. The main things are pH, water temperature and the use of live plants, but there's also other factors such as KH, the filter media type we use, dissolved oxygen levels and the available surface area of our media, everything plays its role and will affect how long the cycling process takes. I've honestly lost count of the number of times people have reached out to me wondering why their tank has taken so long to cycle after seeing someone online say they've been able to cycle their tank in just a couple of weeks. So far, one of these factors has always been at play when people have reached out to me wondering why their new aquarium has taken longer than they expected to cycle. So moving on and I want to take a more detailed look at what I consider the three main things that will affect your cycling time in a new aquarium and I want to start with pH which is often the best indicator for estimating how long it's going to take for your tank to cycle. Although there are other factors at play, in general, if your aquarium has alkaline water with a pH between 7.3 and 8.0, you're usually at the sweet spot where your tank will cycle faster than everyone else's. That's because at this specific pH range, the majority of the beneficial bacteria responsible for processing ammonia and nitrite in our tanks have the fastest possible doubling time, greatly reducing the time needed for a new tank to cycle. Now I'm going to be saying the word doubling a lot in this video, so I just want to clarify what it actually means. In this context, doubling is literally the amount of time it takes from one microorganism to double in size to two, then four, then eight, and so on and so on and so on, until there's a colony of those microorganisms big enough in your tank to control the toxin levels. Just to give you an idea of how quickly this can happen in higher pH tanks, one research paper found that the strain of ammonia oxidizing bacteria they were researching could double in between 8 and 11 hours. Another research paper found that the study of nitrite oxidizing bacteria that they were studying could double in 13 hours, while other related strains in the research paper took between 26 and 43 hours to double. Now these are the microorganisms which tend to be dominant between a pH of 7.3 and 8.0, but if your tank has a pH above 8.0, you still should have a relatively fast cycling time. But for people like myself who have acidic water with a pH level below 7.0, things can take a lot longer. That's because a lot of the bacteria that oxidizes ammonia and nitrite begin to struggle in low pH conditions and their reproduction rate and efficiency significantly drop off. Because of this, cycling a new tank with low pH acidic water often takes far longer and can take a month or even more. That's because we usually use completely different microorganisms in high pH tanks. 
For example, ammonia oxidizing bacteria are usually replaced by ammonia oxidizing archaea, which is a completely different type of microorganism to handle the ammonia to nitrite conversion. The issue is that research has shown that in certain situations, ammonia oxidizing archaea can have a doubling time of 15 to 30 days, not hours, days, and that is considerably longer than the bacteria with the higher pH setups. So that's why you can often see a lot of people in the hobby saying they can cycle their aquariums within a week or two, but if you have low pH water, it's simply going to take longer because of the doubling time of the microorganisms we need to use. And even when we have that ammonia oxidizing archaea established in our tanks, we still have to process the nitrite levels. Unlike high pH tanks that use the nitrite oxidizing bacteria which have a relatively fast doubling time, with low pH setups like my own we usually need to use Comamox nitrospira bacteria and they double at a far slower rate. Now Comamox bacteria were only discovered about a decade ago so there's very little practical research available on them but one study did look into them and note that they had a considerably slow growth rate but they didn't give any specific time frames. So the key takeaways from this section is that if you have high pH alkaline water your tank can cycle in as little as one to two weeks. But if you have low pH acidic water, then you can expect it to take one to two months. Next up, we have water temperature, which also plays a major role in how quickly your aquarium will take to cycle. Nearly all microorganisms involved in the nitrogen cycle perform better in warmer water with the optimal range for most of them being between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius or 77 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now most of those do still function very well down to 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit but below that they do start to slow down and not only with their doubling time but also their processing rate of the toxic nitrogen compound they are there to process. The standout exception to this is Comamox bacteria which researchers found time and time again prefer cooler subtropical water temperatures usually those below 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have a high pH alkaline water tank keeping your water temperature at or above 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. This environment helps the traditional nitrifying bacteria reproduce as quickly as possible potentially allowing your tank to cycle in 7 to 10 days. For low pH acidic water tanks like the ones I personally have, the sweet spot tends to be slightly cooler, usually between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius, which is 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and this tends to be the best range for ammonia oxidizing archaea and Comamox bacteria. That said though, research has found that both ammonia oxidizing archaea and Comamox bacteria are still highly efficient at very cold temperatures, very close to zero, and they've literally been found in glacial forelands doing all of the nitrification there. So while high pH tanks tend to have the clear advantage when it comes to cycling speed, low pH systems can have an advantage with their microorganisms being effective over a far wider temperature range. But it is important to note that each pH level's microorganisms can work outside of their recommended temperature ranges, their efficiency just starts to drop off. Moving on and we get to plants and I'm not going to go into too much detail about how plants help cycle your tank in this video because I've gone over it time and time again in a lot of my other videos but to summarize it briefly plants help manage toxic ammonia and toxic nitrite levels in our aquariums by absorbing ammonium as a nitrogen source for their growth. While slow grown plants can contribute to this process by reducing the overall nitrogen load in the tank, with slow grown plants your beneficial microorganisms will still play a key role. However, with fast grown plants, especially fast grown floating, stem or stolon plants, you can remove large amounts of these nitrogen compounds from your tank very quickly. Because of this, adding a good amount of moderate to fast grown plants to a new aquarium can significantly reduce the cycling time. I will link to my free low tech plant index tool in the description with the link preset to the fast grown species that I recommend for this approach. 
but it is important to note plants are not essential to cycle your tank and you can still achieve a perfectly safe and stable cycle with only microorganisms. So moving on and I want to talk about two things that are recommended time and time again to instantly cycle your tank or drastically reduce your cycling time. The first and most common recommended method is seeding an aquarium. This involves taking filter media from an established tank and squeezing it out into your new setup to try and introduce ready-made colonies of beneficial microorganisms. The idea is that this will jumpstart your cycle and reduce the total time it takes for your new colonies to build up in that ecosystem and keep everything safe and stable. But once again, high pH tanks have that advantage here because the microorganisms that thrive in high pH alkaline water tend to be more robust and tolerant to higher ammonia levels. Research has found that ammonia oxidizing bacteria don't start to experience inhibition until ammonia levels exceed 10 ppm and nitrite oxidizing bacteria only show signs of inhibition when ammonia gets to 1 ppm. These are both relatively high numbers that mean it is possible to successfully seed a high pH alkaline water tank especially with subtropical or tropical water temperatures using mature filter media from another established tank. Theoretically at least this could instantly cycle your tank or at least drastically reduce the time frame required. However, low pH acidic water tanks are a completely different story. That's because the Comamox bacteria which I mentioned earlier that help handle ammonia to nitrite conversion and nitrite to nitrate conversion are not very hardy. Research has found that Comamox bacteria can start to have issues if ammonia levels get to 0.25 ppm which really isn't that much. To try and put that in perspective, most aquarium test kits on the market right now will only start to detect ammonia at 0.25 ppm or higher, which is the level where Comamox bacteria starts to have issues. Now again, keep in mind it will still function, it just starts to slow down and take more and more time to actually cycle a new tank. I've run into this issue multiple times myself when trying to seed new aquariums with my low pH water because so many people say it works consistently. After seeing no real change in the cycling time of the tanks that I tried to seed, I did decide to just work out what was wrong myself and after reading a couple of research papers, I realised that it's probably because the Comamox bacteria is just so sensitive to spiked ammonia levels. Another potential problem with seeding a new aquarium is squeezing out established filter media from a low pH tank into a high pH tank or vice versa. As I covered earlier in the video, they tend to use very different microorganisms and the closer your pH gets to 7.0, ideally up to 7.4, there will be far more crossover but the further you stray from that, the more different the actual microorganism environments become and the less effective that's going to be. Speaking of using the wrong microorganisms to cycle your tank, that brings us nicely on to bacteria in a bottle products. I've covered this topic in more detail in several videos now and I link to one of my main articles on it in the video description. But first of all I do want to give credit where it's due to Fritz Aquatics because they are still, to my knowledge at least, the only company that sells beneficial bacteria in a bottle that have taken the time to produce a detailed user guide explaining exactly what you need to do is in your water parameters such as pH, water temperature and KH to get the best out of their product. However, based on the information that they share on their website in their user guide, it does appear that their product is specifically formulated for high pH, tropical to subtropical aquariums, and I've not seen any benefit when using it in my own low pH, subtropical to temperate, what, temperature aquarium setups. I have tried a few other bacteria in a bottle products myself too and I've never noticed any difference when using them and in general they are very controversial in the hobby. Personally I think it's just because so many of them use similar bacteria to Fritz Aquatics in their Fritzine 7 product where they are specifically designed for high pH tanks. I link to the article I have gone over this in the video description but a relatively recent independent research paper also found that most of these bacteria in a bottle products provide minimal benefit when cycling a brand new tank. 
That was regardless of the pH or water temperature of their test tanks and the only benefits that they saw were with bacteria in a bottle products that contain nitrospira varieties. The problem is that very few manufacturers actually disclose which bacteria strains are in their products making it difficult to know which ones have nitrospira strains in them so you can get those if you want to give them a try. So again, the higher pH tanks are getting the bulk of the benefit when it comes to these methods of speeding things up, and if you're like myself and have a low pH tank, then you're still looking at closer to a month to complete your cycle, regardless of what you do other than using plants. Finally, I want to touch on the most common mistake I see people make time and time and time again when it comes to cycling a new aquarium which usually results in a stall, or at least drastically slowing down their cycling process. From what I've seen with my audience asking questions, the most frequent issue is people forgetting to treat their tap water with a tap water conditioner to remove chlorine or chloramines which can be harmful to beneficial microorganisms. Now I know there's people out there who never use water conditioners with their aquariums and never have problems, but from what I've seen, most if not all of the ones I'm aware of keep heavily planted tanks similar to myself and there's a good chance that they are running a plant-based cycle rather than a microorganism-based cycle so it just doesn't become an issue. But if you're not planning on keeping fast growing plants I do think this can be more risky so I always recommend that you use a tap water conditioner if possible. Research has found that as little as 0.05 ppm of chlorine can start causing gill damage in fish potentially leading to long term health issues. For reference, here in England the maximum guideline for chlorine in tap water is 1 ppm with an average of around 0.5 ppm which is still 10 times what that research paper found could cause gill damage in fish. So for peace of mind I always use API tap water conditioner, this video isn't sponsored in any way, the only reason I use that specific product is because it's the most affordable one available in my area. There's definitely other brands on the market that have similar products that do the exact same thing if they are more affordable in your area, go with one of those. One thing that I would note is that personally at least I don't see the point in paying extra money for the premium conditioners that can detoxify ammonia because if you've cycled your tank correctly there's very little chance of there being a spike later in this process. So find the most affordable tap water conditioner in your area and just use that. Now I do want to quickly answer a question that I often get asked about cycling tanks when talking to people either on social media or via email and that is how does these bacteria and archaea colonies get into our tanks if we don't use bacteria in a bottle products? The answer is simple because they are already in our tap water. But once I explain that the next question I usually get is how do these microorganisms survive in tap water that has chlorine in it? when having chlorine in our aquarium is bad for them. This one's going to depend on the microorganism group we are talking about because research has found ammonia oxidizing RK is able to tolerate chlorine levels of up to 2 ppm without issue. Keep in mind here in England that is twice the limit and four times the average. As for beneficial bacteria, these do tend to be far more sensitive and research suggests that chlorine levels as low as 0.3 ppm can cause them harm. But there is a catch with bacteria in tap water because they are not in their active form, they are in their spore form in the tap water because there's no ammonia for them to activate. In their spore form, research has found that most bacteria tend to be between 10 and 1,000 times more resistant to chlorine than in their active form, like in our aquariums. So another way to look at that is that the bacteria in our tap water is essentially asleep and very tough and hardy, and then once it comes into our aquarium and finds an ammonia or nitrite source, it wakes up and becomes very, very weak to chlorine. Even then though, like I mentioned, the chlorine that's in that tank can still cause issues for the gills of your fish, shrimp and potentially snails. So that's why I always go out and find the most affordable tap water conditioner in my area to neutralise everything and because you're not causing problems for your microorganisms, hopefully it will try and make sure that your cycle is as fast as possible.
Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching and good luck cycling your tanks in the shortest time frame possible.